This is the 11th video in a series about this greenhouse build where I incorporated a shipping container and installed some geothermal systems. The video today is about some of my experiences with those geothermal systems through the first winter. You'll remember back to video three that this greenhouse has a climate battery and an earth tube. The climate battery is buried in a hole that was 10 feet deep, 10 feet wide, and about 40 feet long. And then we wove 500 feet of six inch perforated pipe through that and then buried about 60 yards of oversized rock around the pipe as we put it in three layers. And the earth tube is about 24 inches in diameter and 50 feet long, and it's buried under about six feet of dirt behind the north side of the shipping container. I'll put a link below to video three about the geothermal systems, just in case you haven't watched it yet. It's my favorite time of the year, it's late September. And our outside garden has had its first frost already, but as you can see, the plants in here are still happy. So let's take the time to take a look back at our first winter in this greenhouse. So you see this area back in here on this wall, that's the west wall, uh, it has just polycarbonate. It's getting cold outside. And what I was gonna do is buy blue board insulation and put it in there for the winter. But um, I ran across these. This is an insulating block. Um, we had a very large aluminum plant just north of here that shut down and now it's a uh, super fun. And they had a couple of pallets of these laying around and so I was able to buy them pretty cheap and they're supposed to be insulation, excuse me, insulating uh, up to like 1300 degrees. They used them around the smelters. So I'm going to stack those in there and see how that works. So they're not very heavy. So this should be pretty easy to do. Okay, it's up there, you can see there's a lot of gaps and I'm going to have to put something over it. It's really ugly, but uh, it should work really well. It's about 20 degrees outside and snowing and it's about 50 inside the greenhouse, kind of comfortable. That Some of the plants are looking okay and some of them don't like this weather very much. So what we're going to do is try a little bit of supplemental heating with some compost. We put built this crib here and I have it filled with leaves and I'm going to keep adding compost to it and try to get that break down. Don't have a lot of worms and don't have access to a lot of worms, but that would probably help. So we'll see what that does. And uh, got my trusty thermometer here, so we'll stick that in there and keep track of what it's doing. Right now it's not doing anything because we just put them in there, but uh, we're hopeful. leaves have been in here now for about three weeks and uh, you might remember that they were pretty big and not chopped so about a week ago I had a friend that had some that he had mowed so I took those bigger ones out because they, they were getting about 80 degrees or so inside so I took them out and I just kind of spread them out around and I put the ones in that were mowed and they had been in bags for a while, so they already had some micro rivals going. I'll show you in here, but they, uh, they're chopped up and smaller, and you can already see that uh, they, there's some white color in there, and you can see the, the, them breaking down from the micro rivals growing, the fungi. Anyway, this thing right now today, today it's 140 degrees in there. It's about 32 outside and it got uh, in the teens last night and it's about 42, 44 in here. And so this, this pile is really helping to heat the greenhouse. Now I also put two other piles, one in each corner of that chopped up stuff. Let's go see how hot those are. It's about 89 degrees, 88 degrees, something like that. It's cool on the top and it's, it's still pretty moist, but you can see all that mycorrhizal in there just breaking it down and it's hot inside there. So it's going up 
Looks like it's going to be like the other pile. It's about 80, 87, 88 degrees. We had a little bit of an insect problem on these tomatoes when it was warmer. Of course, we're not now. But you see, it does have some leaf damage. And it's amazing to me that as cool as it is in here, we're getting flowering on these tomatoes. These beans don't look so healthy. Got a little bit of char growing and some uh, beets and carrots. And these pepper plants are just terrible. And that's just mainly from insects, but you can see how droopy they are. They just never have looked good since these insects got in here and, and got to them. It's a white fly infestation. Next year we'll be ready for that. Celery's doing okay in here too, but it's just really slow. And those same white flies uh, attack these tomatoes, and I think I'm probably just going to end up pulling them because they're just they're just not doing well at all. But we do have some flowers on there. We're not hurting anything, I guess, sitting there. We'll see what they do. It's pretty hard to see, but we still have some white flies in here. You can see them on the ceiling there. Hopefully they're dead and not dormant. There's a lot of them. The spider's doing its job, catching a few. And this kohlrabi, we're gonna kinda let it go to seed. It's way too big to eat, but it's a sure beautiful plant. Little white mold on here too, doesn't look so healthy. This kale. But we'll let it grow, it looks really good with the new growth in there. Broccoli's looking really good. We've picked some and taken it in and eaten it. Cabbage is looking good. We've been eating some of that. And uh, the cauliflower, looking really nice. This one is needing to be harvested. It's getting pretty darn big. It's cold outside. It got down to, uh, I don't know, two or three degrees last night, and when I came out about eight o'clock in the morning, it was 22 degrees right here behind me, and over there where the bird tube comes out, it was about 35 degrees, but it froze some stuff. I had all the water drains, so there was no freezing or anything like that. And it was a really sunny day, and it's about four in the afternoon right now. The sun is getting low being December and uh, right now it is 54 in here. So the bottom line is that last winter the geothermal systems provided enough heat to keep the greenhouse from freezing at least until the temperatures went to the teens and stayed there for an extended period of time. This year the climate battery has been charged to above 65 degrees which is about 15 degrees warmer than it was last year. So I expect to have better results. I do have a natural gas boiler, but I haven't installed it yet. But if I want to keep producing any cold sensitive plants through the winter, or if I wanted to start growing crops with resale, I'll definitely need to put it into service. Another thing that I'll definitely have to do is provide more supplemental light. There are a few more things that I'd like to experiment with this winter like using barrels of water for heat sinks. And I'm gonna put some more insulation in the ridge and in the walls in the west end. So that brings us to the end of video 11. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do that. It's a great way to stay updated on howtofarmandgarden.com. So subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment, ask a question, and until next time, Lord bless.